anybody have a good handle on it? Your Honor, it's just, Your Honor, under, under 27.004, the Civil Practice Army is called the, the Anti-Slap Statute, the hearing must uh, be set no later than the 60th day after the date of service of the motion. And then, Your Honor, um, the hearing shall occur 90 days after service of the motion. And then I think we have 30 days um, to rule from the date of the hearing or it is being uh, denied uh, if, if you don't be sure rule in that 30-day period. I haven't calculated The motion will serve, Your Honor, on October, I believe, the uh, 18th. So I need my money. I trust the court had no problem hearing it. It does help periodically, though, if the court reporter misses a word. Thank you, Your Honor. The chance of missing it is much less. Your Honor, I believe the uh, other place I've double looked for the hearing occurs, it occurred 90 days after it's filed. If there's good cause of the court's docket, it requires it. And if the court grants discovery. Does that include South Texas deer hunting? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, Your Honor. That's part of the statute. Which would require, Your Honor, for the court to go through the exercise of finding the good cause and, and uh, specifically uh, relating to the docket and why the good cause occurs and so forth. Or, Your Honor, <coughs> on a motion by a party or on uh, the court's own motion on showing good cause. We can have specific and limited discovery and the hearing is not until 120 days afterwards. And then you have another 30 days to work. So the 120 days will take us to mid February. And, and again, Your Honor, I mean, that in terms of, of uh, good cause for seeking the discovery, uh, I don't think they can, they can do that. They've done nothing. First of all, the statute is written so that discovery is not fatal. This is to be decided on an expeditious matter before you get into all of the, the expense and the time that discovery consumes. So the statute is, is directed to allow a very speedy resolution. Now obviously, if the court's docket is such and so forth, uh, but this is not your typical claim that you can come in and conduct full board discovery or request even full board discovery. As a matter of fact, the statute its operation freezes all discovery in the case, which we have in this case not, not gone there because of, of, of what preceded us in the special appearance. Well, I entered into this discussion just to inquire as to what has I have had full docket. I have not looked to see what precise I was told there was a motion to continue certain hearings anticipated and did not know what it was, if it was filed, and if so, what did it go to? Your Honor, just to answer that uh, again, everything set on the court's docket is subject to our announcement of not ready, a motion for continuance, and a request that we have some additional discovery. So it, it, there's, there's nothing that we continue forward with without at least addressing the motion for continuance. And I'm ready to proceed on the motion for continuance whenever you are. Well, and just before we go there, just to try to let everybody know what my intent is, again, just to afford the media a fair opportunity. To engage in open court system, and allow have told bailiffs to allow cameras or whatnot just for about the first 15, 20 minutes or so, as we've done in the past, <coughs> and then after that, there'll be no electronic recording 
back to the old pen and paper just like myself after that. So by about 9.30, if we can probably just take some kind of final breaking point and then we'll let cameras and all other recording devices outside the court. Yes, sir. As to your motion for contempt, I mean, are you intending to address, I guess, like you said, everything else? Yes, Your Honor. But including the, the jurisdictional issues? Yes, Your Honor. Why don't we start there? Because that's what I was really anticipating getting resolved today. Well, uh, first of all, Your Honor, uh, Ray Jeffrey, Elliot Capuccio, and Mark Wiegand on behalf of Monique Rathman, who's the plaintiff in this case. <clears throat> and just to get ourselves oriented, there are procedural and substantive issues on your docket today. The procedural issues have to be decided first, but you have to put them in the context of what, what are the substantive matters that we're uh, making this procedural request about. And the context is this. The defendants, uh, David Miscavige and the Religious Technology Center, RTC, uh, they want to be dismissed from the case because they claim that this Texas court has no jurisdiction over them. So that's one of the substantive matters today. Number two, all the other defendants are asking to be dismissed because they claim that this is an unlawful suit to deprive them of their rights of free speech, free petition, free association, that sort of thing. And as uh, we refer to as an anti-slap motion. But make no mistake about it, what all the defendants are asking for uh, in the matters on your docket is that uh, Mrs. Rathbun's um, case be dismissed permanently. Uh, needless to say, this is extremely uh, important to Mrs. Rathbun and to her family. And that brings us to our procedural issue that has to be decided first. Has Mrs. Rathbun had a fair opportunity to respond to the defendant's dispositive motions? For very good reasons, we say no. Uh, we have worked hard since we were last here before you to gather evidence through discovery and otherwise. But the <coughs> evidence, as you'll see in here, uh, obtained that that we've been able to pry, I guess you could say, from the defendants uh, is woefully incomplete for our purposes, for the purposes of these dispositive motions that are set. Um, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, we announced not ready on all of the defendants' motions that are set today. And what we're asking the court for is temporary relief in the form of two things. Excuse me, Mr. Jeffrey. Excuse me, Your Honor. Just to understand the procedure, he, he seems to be addressing the continuance on the anti-slap motion. <clears throat> Did I not hear the court correctly in directing him to address the motion for continuance on the special appearance? Now, I've, I've got a dog in that fight, too, but to the extent that I, I see him going into what will be my motion, the anti-slap motion, I just, I just need a clarification. Are we taking them jointly, uh, or, or did you want to do them one at a time, Your Honor? Your Honor, I, after I complete, uh, you know, I'm just trying to help and not interrupt. After, I do intend to address the general uh, aspects of the motion for continuance on both together. I'm not going to then ask for another argument uh, separately later on. I just don't want to have to duplicate. But, well, Your Honor, respectfully, there, there are elements in his request for the continuance in the um, uh, anti-slap matter uh, that are very particular and specific to that request. Uh, and well, if I need segregating, I'm sure you can help me with that. Okay. Thanks. So, what we're asking for the court with regard to all the motions is temporary relief at some additional time and adequate discovery. Um, if you go back to uh, September uh, 11th or 12th, I think was the first time we had a couple of days of hearings and then some hearings afterwards, 
uh, the court recognized at that time that we were entitled to jurisdictional discovery, but Your Honor deferred a ruling on what would the extent of that jurisdictional discovery uh, be. You made a very common sense uh, proposal that the parties agreed to, which was let's take this on an incremental basis, I think was the term, and you all get together, see what you can agree on doing, do that discovery, and then if there's more discovery needed, you come back to the court and ask for it. That's where we are today. We're back here asking for it. Um, in particular, <coughs> since this thing first came on, uh, we have noticed the deposition of uh, David Miscavige, uh, uh, one of the defendants who has moved for dismissal. Uh, the, part, the court deferred any ruling on that, and we didn't have to get into the argument over that at the time. So now, here we are, we have more or less completed all the initial discovery, and it's clear that we need more. Now, to address the need for discovery, uh, we've got to start with an understanding of basically what the party's positions are in the broadest sense. And I can summarize, from my perspective, both sides in two sentences each. First of all, with regard to our client, Mrs. Rathbun's claims, she claimed that her husband was one of several whistleblowers who revealed in the worldwide media that Captain David Miscavige, one of the defendants, personally was responsible for beatings, imprisonment, and other human rights abuses of defendant employees. So let me just start to, I'll give you about five more minutes, but because I am limiting the camera coverage, I want both sides to have equal opportunity in front of the camera. So as far as just opening five minutes, gets, and then we can revisit it, but just giving me a lay of the land regarding the continuum. Okay. If you can, if you both sides that same option. Your Honor, if I may just, if you'll just stop me when you want me to stop, but I, I've, I've worked very hard on, on an organized presentation. I don't know how to distill it into five minutes. I understand. Okay. Um, so, that was sentence one in terms of description of our claims. And we claim furthermore that Captain Miscavige reacted to the threat of these whistleblowers, including Mr. Rathbun, by personally directing an unlawful effort to make the Rathbun's life, in essence, a living hell. That's our position. The defendants, we recognize, claim that Captain Miscavige was 100% uninvolved in the defendants' activities against the Rathbuns. And they also claim that they did not in any way act to uh, destroy, so to speak, the Rathbuns, but merely to lawfully investigate uh, trademark violations and engage in religious dialogue. That kind of what, so, so you know the landscape substantively of what the parties are fighting over. You cannot weigh the merits of our request for time and additional discovery without understanding what we are up against. Uh, our position is, in this hearing today, and in this case in general, that they are hiding, denying, and possibly destroying evidence of Miscavige's control over the defendant corporations and over this campaign in Texas against the RAC funds. We don't have just a hunch about this. It's not saying, well, hey, that, maybe that's one possible speculative thing that's going on here. We have filed more than a dozen sworn declarations from knowledgeable witnesses about this. Uh, you know, the court, I know, hears discovery disputes all the time, more often than you want to hear discovery disputes. This is not your routine run-of-the-mill discovery dispute among routine run-of-the-mill litigants. Obviously, there's a, a lot more hot-button issues to this. Um, how am I doing? 
you enough time, Your Honor. I don't want to. Couple more minutes. Okay. And I'll give them about seven or eight minutes. Okay. One. You've had in total. One thing that I'd like to point the court to in this regard is uh, case law on the books, um, the Church of Scientology versus Wallershine. Coincidentally, happens to be the granddaddy of uh, anti-slap motion cases. In that case, the Church of Scientology had a very large award levied against it for attorney's fees for bringing you know, what's called a slap suit. In that case, the court, the court of Appeals in California recites the nature of their approach to litigation, which is what we're having to deal with in this case. In that case, they actually sued the plaintiff, they sued the plaintiff's lawyers, they sued the plaintiff's expert witnesses, they petitioned the ninth Circuit Court of Appeals to disqualify the entire federal bench in the Central District of California. Their conduct was so unusual that the Ninth Circuit actually struck from its records their motion. They filed this action against all of the parties and lawyers and everything else under RICO. That was dismissed. Then they sought to have the trial judges in California and the state court uh, uh, dismissed from the case um, for some type of prejudice or something like that. That was dismissed. Jury came back with an award of $5 million in actual damages and $25 million in punitive damages uh, against <coughs> them for intentional infliction of emotional distress and that sort of thing. In, in the appellate decision of Wallersheim, which I'll provide you, Your Honor, there was, there was evidence that the trial judges, and by the way, some of the same lawyers in this courtroom were involved in that 15-year litigation in California. The trial judges' tires were slashed. His collie dog was drowned in a swimming pool. There was evidence that it was actually done by the Scientologists. All this is reviewed. So I, I don't want the court to have the mistaken impression that we're dealing with normal litigation and normal litigants here. Um, you can read that at, at your leisure, and I won't go over it anymore. Um, Unless you've got something else in specific. Yes. Give I, them an opportunity just to respond to your filed motion. Okay, thank thing. you, Your Honor. It's an opening statement. Whoever wants to proceed. Okay, Your Honor, I'll, I'll focus very briefly. Um, first of all, the Wallachum case <clears> that he decides is totally irrelevant. It, it happened in the 1990s, in the early 1990s. There's nothing to do with the facts in this case. Um, what this case is about, ostensibly, is Mrs. Rathbun claiming that she has been harassed, that her invasion has been, uh, her privacy has been invaded by the defendants. Uh, and in fact, what we've seen in this case is it's not Mrs. Rathbun who's involved, it's Mr. Rathbun who's involved. Mr. Rathbun has attended every single deposition in the case. Mr. Rathbun has, is the one who submitted affidavits in, in the case. Mr. Rathbun has a blog that he hosts targeting the Church of Scientology and Mr. Miscavige, my client, and the, the Re Religious Technology Center. Mr. Rathbun is the one who's involved in this case. If it was just Mrs. Rathbun involved in the case, we could sit easily resolve all of the claims that she brings forward in this case. No continuance would be necessary. And, and that is, in, in fact, the case. We've got a defendant here who's willing to respond, ready and able to respond to the claims that Mrs. Rathbun brings. What Mr. Jeffrey wants to do is argue about everything else in the world besides Mrs. Rathbun. We don't hear about Mrs. Rathbun. We hear about 30-year-old issues, 20-year-old cases, that sort of thing. And all the while that, Ms., that Mr. Rathbun is targeting Mr. Miscavige, my client, <coughs> Mr. Miscavige is not returning the favor. Mr. Rathbun thinks that he is. Mr. Rathbun believes that Mr. Miscavige somehow is targeting him for all of these supposed attacks that Mr. all of the attacks that Mr. Rathbun has been engaging against the church. The truth is, Mr. Miscavige has been busy doing other things. This is a picture from last week, from a couple of weeks ago in Clearwater, Florida, an event where the church was in, involved in an international. Uh, uh, 
that when Mr. Rafkin has been on CNN and on, B on the BBC and media across the country, that Mr. Miscavige doesn't know about it, hasn't heard about Mr. Rafkin's attacks on the church. That doesn't mean that Mr. Miscavige should be subjected to the deposition, to a deposition in this case in Texas or on a case that's in Texas when he is engaged in other matters and Ms. Mrs. Rafkin has the full opportunity to get vindication for her claims based on the defendants who are present in the lawsuit. You know, the only thing I would add, Your Honor, uh, in the request for uh, continuing the anti-slap uh, part of the work that, that we budgeted a couple of days ago, uh, uh, it's been uh, said to you that there's over a dozen affidavits or people with knowledge about what's really going on. We got those earlier this week, number one. Uh, we're not complaining about that. We're certainly not asking for any more time uh, to deal with it. Uh, we are prepared to file specific objections to each and every one of those. I think there's 13, uh, not 12. Uh, uh, and, Thank you. And, and show the, the, uh, show the uh, uh, foundation, uh, the hearsay, uh, the hearsay within hearsay, uh, that each of these is absolutely complete with. Uh, and then lastly, Judge, the reason that I interrupted, and I apologize, is that that was lack of decorum, but it, it, it makes a difference, Your Honor. Uh, his grounds for a continuance of the anti-slap motion requires very specific words that he has to meet. Uh, and uh, he has not met them and cannot meet them uh, on the papers that he has filed for you uh, to, to consider his request. Uh, and I'm, I'm not waiving any of that by having him just sort of address everything that he's engaged. He, I, I take it he is now ready to, to address the, the, uh, uh, the motion for continuance, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll get into the specifics when it's my turn uh, to show you why it's effective. Mr. Spencer, anything to add? Uh, no, sir, other than just to echo what Mr. Cedillo very correctly pointed out, which is that, uh, uh, and Mr. Jefferson, this case really is properly <coughs> Uh, by the plaintiff herself against our client, uh, Church of Scientology International, and the other non-church defendants. By our motion, our uh, anti-slap motion, we directly placed an issue with the fact that uh, <coughs> private investigators were hired, and we are showing the very legitimate uh, uh, investigation, lawful investigation that they conducted. The same with oral busters, uh, you remember the people who were down here uh, near Corpus Christi, very clearly constitutionally protected uh, activity. We'll get to that uh, later in the course of the proceedings. Uh, the, the, uh, that is the real case, what is addressed by the uh, slide motion. The efforts by the non-party, Mr. Rampman, to pursue his, frankly, in my view, cultish agenda to attack uh, uh, defendant David Stavage uh, uh, should be seen simply as that. We need to go forward uh, uh, with uh, Andy Slap to bring the real lawsuit to conclusion. As Mr. Cedillo correctly pointed out, there are special and specific statutory bases for continuous on that, which we're confident the uh, plaintiff will be on that. Thank you, Your Honor. So beyond the jurisdictional and the uh, Andy Slap motion and the corresponding motion for what else are we intending to try to resolve today, or today and or Friday? I believe that that is, is the universe of what's before the court now. Okay. Any, just with that limitation, any brief response over here? Well, obviously, Your Honor, I still have more to say on the continuance, but I'll, I can wait till after the break. Okay. Well, then why don't we just uh, take a few minutes. Anybody needs to get rearranged? Get the cameras out, phones, recording devices, laptops, etc. Just need to be turned off, and then we'll go back to pencil and paper, or coal in the backside of a shovel, or whatever we need.